Here we are at the third site. This site is somewhat unique. We're now leaving the forest and entering a different habitat. On this side, we can see the gradual decrease of trees signifying the end of the climax forest. And on this side, we can see the gradual increase in herbaceous plants and shrubs signifying the beginning of the fen, which is the next site. The transition zone from one type of ecosystem into another, or in other words, where the two ecosystems overlap, is called an ecotone. As you move through the ecotone, you get changes in water content, soil content, soil type, and so on. An example of how the change in environment, in this case water content, causes the species to change is provided by two types of moss. On this side, we see the moss that occurs in the drier forest habitat. And on this side, we see the moss that occurs in the water, wetter fen habitat. As the, an ecotone provides conditions of both adjacent ecosystems, species diversity in the zone is higher. I also want to mention that the ecotone here is relatively narrow, meaning that the transition from the forest into the fen occurs fairly rapidly. When leaving the fen, the ecotone will be larger and more gradual, and I'll point that out when we get there. Here we are at site 4A. This is our first stop in the fen. By taking a quick look around, you can notice the vastly different environment in this area. It's open and sunny compared to the sheltered and dark environment under the canopy in the forest. There's not a lot of trees, or not tall ones anyway. There's mostly shrubs and grasses. Fens are formed when water tables close to the surface are filled in with organic matter. Typically there's a flow of water which carries nutrients into and out of the system, with a net gain of nutrients into the system. So you might be wondering, if there's plenty of sunlight and a net gain of nutrients, why isn't this area flourishing? For example, take a look at this tree. The issue here is that the breakdown of organic matter releases acids and acidic resins, and these build up in the fin, causing the water to become acidic. The acidic water acts as a preservative and slows down the decomposition process, keeping nutrient levels low. Furthermore, it prevents proper root development and causes unfavorable rooting conditions for larger plants. It keeps the roots shallow. Lastly, it impedes nutrient uptake by plants. All these factors contribute to the small and misshapen nature of the plants in this area. While plant diversity is fairly high, it is limited to shrubs and grasses that are anatomically and physiologically adapted for these specific conditions. Let's take a look at some of these plants. These berries here, which will normally be bright red, uh, when fully ripe are called marsh berries. This plant right here which has white petals is called a bog candle orchid. This plant right here which has uh, which the leaves are curled on the sides and there's a white cotton material is called Labrador tea. This plant which the leaves point straight up is called leather leaf. Here we see Sweet Gale, which has a sort of elongated teardrop shaped leaves, and there are serrations on the tip. Here we have Bog Laurel, which is similar to Sheep Laurel. The difference is in Bog Laurel, the flower is at the top, whereas in Sheep Laurel, um, there's leaves above the flower. And lastly, here we have Bog Girls Mary. I also want to point out this tree right here. A lot of people in Newfoundland will call this a juniper, but a uh, juniper is actually an entirely different species, different plant. The proper name for this tree is larch, 
and so for this reason it's important to use scientific names as opposed to local names lastly I will point out the pitcher plant New Fertilands provincial flower as an example of a microhabitat within a fen ecosystem because of the acidic nature of this environment this plant can't take up enough nitrogen so it is adapted to trap insects the pitchers fill up with water an insect walks down there it can't walk back up because of downward pointing hairs it eventually drowns and dies and it is digested and the nitrogen is taken up by the plant Here we are at site 4B. The rock mound to the side of me is another example of a microhabitat within an ecosystem. It provides a place for squirrels to store their food and to perch on while eating, allowing easy detection of predators. It also provides a home for numerous insects. Here we are at site 4C. The wood stack to side of me is yet another microhabitat within an ecosystem. It provides a home for pupating organisms such as butterflies and moths, and as it decomposes, it returns nutrients back to the soil. Here we are at site 4D, we're now leaving the forest and entering the fen. So because we're going from one ecosystem into another, this area is called an ecotone. One thing that I wanted to point out is the gradual change in vegetation in contrast to the quick transition of the ecotone when entering the fen. And this results in a much wider ecotone at this location. Here we are at site 5 to cut over. By taking a quick look around, you can easily see the open area where the trees were cut down. This happened approximately 35 years ago. This area is an example of secondary succession, which occurs in areas where a previously existing community has been removed by a smaller scale disturbance that does not eliminate all life and nutrients from the environment. For example, a fire, a flood, a virus, and in this case, cutting, which did not destroy the underlying soil. It is called succession because certain species have evolved to exploit the particular conditions of the community in a predictable sequence. The underlying soil and high level of sunlight have attracted pioneer species, such as grasses, 
seen throughout and mountain alders seen here as pioneer alder shrubs and other intermediate species such as pin cherry seen here grow taller they will reduce the amount of available light and be outcompeted and overtaken by shade tolerant trees like fir and spruce eventually fir will overtake the spruce trees as they have a shorter germination time and you will get a climax forest.